Tonight I'm going to talk to you about this book, Mind Over Medicine by Lisa Rankin. I did a video on this book back in 2022. So what I'll do is I'll make this video and then I'll just attach the other video just in case I may have missed something. This book seeks to answer one question. What if you have the power to heal your body just by changing how your mind thinks and feels? And that's essentially the premise of this entire book, right there. In chapter one, the shocking truth about your health beliefs. The author explores the placebo effect. She says, fake treatments such as sugar pills, saline injections, and sham surgeries are randomly used in modern clinical trials to determine whether a particular drug surgery or treatment is truly effective. Now, I don't know if I would want to go to the doctor or the surgeon and, and go there for some particular surgery and they don't even do it. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. I think that's, that's risky. So I, you know, I don't know about that one so much. The author says when given placebos, bald men grow hair, blood pressure drops, warts disappear, ulcers heal, stomach acid levels decrease, colon inflammation decreases, cholesterol levels drop, Jaw muscles relax and swelling goes down after dental procedures. Brain dopamine levels increase in patients with Parkinson's disease. White blood cell activity increases and the brains of people who experience pain relief light up on imaging studies. I just took this picture off the internet, but um, if you believe it will affect you, it will. If you don't, it won't. When the body is in a rested, relaxed state, the body can repair itself. Anything that reduces stress and elicits a relaxation response not only alleviates the symptoms the stress response can cause, but frees the body to do whatever it does naturally by healing itself. You know, one of the most relaxing smells I, I have ever experienced is burning leaves or burning wood. I find that to be the most relaxing, more relaxing than, than being on this beach right here. And I've been on beaches before. It's, it's just, it just takes me somewhere else. It's like heavenly, you know? In chapter two, the surefire way to make yourself sick and prevent disease remission, the author discusses a phenomenon called the nocebo effect. Now you've heard of the placebo effect, that's what I just talked about. But this is the nocebo effect. If you think sick, you will be sick. Just as positive beliefs can heal, negative beliefs can do the opposite. A, a lot of of things go on in our minds, our subconscious and our conscious. Um, I also think there are spiritual things that go on. If we believe in something that can heal us, let's say if I have a migraine or something, and uh, maybe that smell comes through my window, and all of a sudden my migraine is gone. Why is it gone? Because I, I caught a whiff of that burning wood or those burning leaves. And for some reason, that triggered something from my past and it healed me in the present. That's just one example. Doctors hold a lot of power over a patient's health and the healing process. The author states, if you tell patients in a clinical trial, they will be given a pill that will relieve their pain. There's a good chance the pain will go away, even if they're given a sugar pill. But if you warn them that the treatment might cause nausea and vomiting, 
there's a high likelihood they'll puke even when they never got the real drug. This is so true. Doctors and nurses and other healthcare practitioners have a lot of power. But some of them use it for good, but I think most of them don't use it for good. I, I think they enjoy giving people bad news. I think they enjoy watching people suffer. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's just, I've been to a lot of physicians and most of them I have not been happy with. The power of suggestion is powerful. The nocebo effect is the most obvious in voodoo death. This is when a person is cursed and told he or she will die. Then they die. <laughs> um, you know, this is, this is the power of the mind. Uh, she says here, our parents also shape the beliefs we hold in our subconscious minds. Negative beliefs that we observe in our parents get programmed into our subconscious mind at a young age. Your subconscious mind gets filled with beliefs you download from parents, teachers, and others who influence you early in life. Fill in your mind with programs that will run your life unless you learn to reprogram your subconscious mind. Yeah, I've, I have been in, in the company of some of the worst people you can imagine. And my dad was one of them. My dad was a, a non-believer in everything. He didn't believe in anything. He didn't believe you could do anything. He didn't believe that the mind was powerful. He didn't believe in any damn thing. And um, he brought that down on, on us, you know, his children. It took me a long time to start believing in things start believing in myself because of this terrible programming and it's not only him i've had teachers i've had others in my life who were just like him in chapter three the healing factor that can make all the difference the author lists 15 healers like doctors and nurses and stuff uh, that can amplify their art now this is what a healer can do for you they can listen Instead of just talking, they could listen to you. They can open their heart. That means just, you know, be compassionate. <laughs> Make eye contact instead of just looking down at a screen or, uh, you know, a clipboard or something. Uh, they can take their hand off the doorknob and sit down. You know, like a lot of times a doctor will come in, talk to the patient, and then they're out. They're out the door. They're gone. You never see them again. <laughs> they don't care. Uh, be present. Yeah, a lot of doctors are not present. They're just sitting there waiting to get through this and then they're out the door. Offer a healing touch. Maybe touch your hand or something. Invite the patient to be your partner. Yeah, um, a doctor and a patient should coexist together in this unified group, uh, part of the group, because you'll have other people in your healing group but the doctor is very important to that avoid judgment yeah doctor shouldn't judge you you know and say hey maybe it's all your fault educate but don't dictate yeah i mean a doctor should educate their patients choose your words with care and remain optimistic i find that so many doctors and nurses are are negative they're just the opposite of this. They're pessimistic. Trust your patient's intuition. So if the patient feels something, the doctor should trust that. Go with it. Be respectful of other practitioners who are treating your patient. Like a lot of times doctors, traditional doctors, will um, kind of look down on alternative doctors. So they shouldn't do that. Reassure your patients they are not alone. Yeah, because there's so many people going through the same things. Encourage stress relief and let your presence relieve stress. So you shouldn't feel stressed as soon as your doctor walks in the room. And finally, offer hope. 
because no matter how grim the prognosis, spontaneous remission is always possible. It is. A person can spontaneously heal. There's a book by Dr. Andrew Weil called Spontaneous Healing. You should check it out. In chapter 4, Redefining Health, the author says that in order to live a vital life, prevent disease, or optimize the chance for disease remission, you need to have healthy relationships, meaningful ways to spend your days, a creative life, a spiritual life, and so forth. A lot of people do not have healthy relationships these days. I do and I don't. Um, but at least I'm better off than what I was in the past. And meaningful ways to spend your days, you know, I mean, I don't know, a lot of people spend their days playing video games or watching porn. Uh, you know, these are not good ways to spend your days. But, but I'm not being judgmental. Those are your days. I have nothing to do with it. It's none of my business. I'm just here to encourage you to do the right things at the way I see them. And you can still do whatever you want, whoever you are. When the conscious forebrain thinks positive thoughts and feels things like love, connection, intimacy, pleasure, and hope, the hypothalamus stops triggering the stress response. The parasympathetic nervous system takes over, then your thoughts lead to self-healing. You know, a lot of this is practical, really, but, n but not the easiest thing to do. Like, to calm down, what would you have to do to be totally relaxed these days? I think you would have to turn off social media for a while or, or a month. I did it for a month, like over the summer, and um, it, it made some major differences in my life. The way I thought, the way I felt. Um, I'm not so much an addict anymore, but I used to be. In the last section of the book, Write the Prescription, the author says, Merely knowing what needs to change isn't enough. The hardest part of the process is mustering up the guts to actually do what you know you need to do. See, like I say, do the work. She says, If we listen to the whispers, tap into the truth of what the body is telling us. And make changes that reduce stress responses and elicit relaxation responses, we can prevent the whispers from escalating into full blown diseases. But when we ignore the whispers, or when they're so disassociated from our bodies that we don't even hear the whispers, the body begins to yell. I've been watching a lot of videos on people with cirrhosis and liver disease. And a lot of them were given signs along the way. And I'm sure probably every one of them. They just didn't all mention it. But they got signs. They got these little whispers and maybe even yells. But they didn't listen. They just kept drinking. And so they, you know, they're suffering the consequences of that. And I, like I say here, I will conclude this video by summarizing chapter 10. Six steps to healing yourself. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot of information in this book. I just narrowed it down, but I suggest you read it, find it somewhere. Uh, step one, believe you can heal yourself. What you believe manifests in your body. Your beliefs may be limiting what your body can do. As long as you believe your disease is incurable, there w this will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you want to quiet your mind so that it becomes receptive to changing beliefs. You want to tell yourself over and over, maybe create a mantra of some kind, I am whole, healthy, and free of symptoms. Step two, find the right support. These are your health care providers. Now, you want to seek health care providers who you can truly trust or that truly care and, and you also want to listen to the wisdom, wisdom of your body. Make sure that your health care provider respects your intuition because you know your body uh, pretty well. 
I mean, uh, there's other people that know the body too, but you're living in your body, you know, if you don't feel well or not. Uh, step three, listen to your body and intuition. You can do this by, by getting quiet, breathing deeply and noticing any physical sensations you experience. And I suggest also turning off all electronic devices, including your phone. Don't go on social media. Stay away from all of that. Stay away from scrolling. Just get off the internet completely. Ask your body what it's trying to communicate to you. So if you're on social media and you're doing all these things, how are you going to be able to listen to your body? Your inner pilot light, the wise healer that lies within you, is your body's best friend and always knows exactly what your body needs. Don't ignore his messages. If you let them, physical symptoms can build a bridge between you and your inner pilot light. I like to think of inner pilot light as God or the Holy Spirit. But you can think of it as, as you choose you know, whatever your religious beliefs are. Step four, diagnose the root causes of your illness. So ask yourself what your body needs in order to heal. What are your beliefs about the body's ability to repair itself? You know, what makes you feel spiritually connected? For me, I would sit outside in my backyard. I, I can't do that now, but I could before. <laughs> sit in, the, in my backyard and just smell the leaves burn or the wood burn because I was able to do that where I lived before. Step five, write a prescription for yourself. I, I included this picture of the author. I guess she released a DVD, two DVD set. And she just says to just list a prescription for yourself. You know, write the diagnosis and all that stuff and then take action. And step six, surrender attachment to outcomes. So after you've shifted to positive belief, found the right support group, tapped into the wisdom of your body and your inner pilot light and you made the diagnosis you wrote the prescription and took action on it it's time to surrender and let go of attaching to any particular outcome i say i said this just let it go have faith and watch your healing unfold that's my suggestion but also i suggest getting off social media and just be, just relax, just, just be, <laughs> just live. And you will relax when you're off social media. I love social media, by the way, but I'm just saying. Anyway, I hope that helps. And like I said, I will attach my previous video to this one. Talk to you later. Bye. Mind Over Medicine by Lisa Rankin. In the introduction, the author says, what if I told you that caring for your body is the least important part of your health? That for you to be truly vital, other factors are more important. What if the key to health isn't just eating a nutritious diet, exercising daily, maintaining a healthy weight, getting eight hours of sleep, taking your vitamins, balancing your hormones, or seeing your doctor for regular checkups? What if... You have the power to heal your body just by changing how your mind thinks and feels. She says, focusing your attention on illness will make you sick. If doctors tell patients that a pill did well in clinical trials to relieve pain, it will relieve their pain, even if it's just a sugar pill. But if the doctor warns them the pill will cause nausea and vomiting, then there's a high likelihood they'll be sick. When our beliefs are hopeful and optimistic, the brain releases chemicals that put the body in a state of physiological rest, controlled primarily by the parasympathetic nervous system. And in this state of rest, the body's natural self-repair mechanisms are free to get to work fixing what's broken in the body. But if we have negative beliefs, 
the brain perceives them as a threat. This activates the fight or flight response. The body will be too busy dealing with this response and not deal with cancer or some other disease. Doctors can help in the healing processes too. What they do can speed up the healing process so the body can go about the business of self-repair. Optimism and trust on the part of the physician also makes a difference. She says there are 15 ways healers can amplify their art. One, listen. Just listen to your patient. Two, open your heart. Three, make eye contact. Four, take your hand off the doorknob and sit down. Five, be present. Six, offer healing touch. Seven, invite your patient to be your partner. Eight, avoid judgment. Nine, educate, but don't dictate. 10. Choose your words with care and remain optimistic. 11. Trust your patient's intuition. 12. Be respectful of other practitioners who are treating your patient, like massage therapists or acupuncturists and, and so forth. 13. Reassure your patients they are not alone. 14. Encourage stress relief and let your presence relieve stress. 15. Offer hope, because no matter how grim the prognosis, spontaneous remission is always possible. Doctors are there when we need them, but we also need to take care of ourselves. Lisa says, in order to live a vital life, prevent disease, or optimize the chance for disease remission, you would need healthy relationships. This includes a strong network of family and friends. A healthy, meaningful way to spend your days, whether you work outside the home or in it. A healthy, fully expressed creative life, including a sense of connection to the sacred in life. A healthy sexual life. A healthy financial life. She says loneliness and overwork are major stressors on the body. So in order to prevent loneliness from taking over your life, you need to let the world see your real, authentic self. You need to connect with like-minded people. As for overwork, it can cause headaches, backaches, insomnia, gastrointestinal problems. In order to prevent overwork, you need to find a work environment that avoids shaming employees, encourages creativity, allows flexibility, and fosters positive work relationships. She says there are six steps to healing yourself. Step one, believe you can heal yourself. What you believe manifests in the body. Your beliefs may be limiting what your body can do. As long as you believe your disease is incurable, this will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. But simply quieting your mind can make you more receptive to changing beliefs. You need to create statements like, I am whole, I am healthy, I am free of symptoms. Then start visualizing your body in a healthy state. She says, be the guardian of your brain. Make a conscious effort to avoid negative thoughts about your health. Step two. Find the right support. Find health care providers who believe in you. If your doctor uses words like incurable, then find another doctor. Find health care providers who truly care. She says it's time to bring care back to health care. Step three, listen to your body and intuition. Let your body be your guide. She says to get quiet, breathe deeply, notice any sensations you experience, ask your body what it's trying to communicate to you, and so forth. Step four, diagnose the root cause of your illness. Every illness is either caused by or exacerbated by triggering of the stress response. 
This happens in the body, but it starts in the mind. Something within your control may be causing your health problem. You want to ask yourself, what are my beliefs about health? What are my beliefs about illness? How do I support my own health? Am I living an authentic life? Do I make an effort to get my desires met? How do I feel about my romantic life? Do I feel worthy of love and affection? Step five, write the prescription for yourself. Look inward, close your eyes, and tap into the wisdom of your inner pilot light. Be open, loving, and compassionate with yourself. Step six, surrender attachment to outcomes. Just let it go. I think you should surrender the outcome to God. Let God take over. In summary, believe you can heal yourself. Gather a healing round table of practitioners from several disciplines. These are from conventional and non-traditional healers. Examine yourself from all angles, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, and so forth. Look inward and you'll eventually find what you're looking for. I like to recommend this book, Mind Over Meds, by Dr. Andrew Weil, to supplement your reading of the Mind Over Medicine book. It's more like a reference book on drugs, like their history, side effects, and how to avoid them if you can. Dr. Weil examines antibiotics, statin drugs, medicines for GERD, sleep aids, steroids, and a bunch of others. All of Dr. Weil's books are good to read, so I suggest you go to those. You can also go to him on AskDrWeil.com. So those two books will help you and steer you in the right direction. You can put those in your health library, save them for when you need them, and I will talk to you later. Bye.